Opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. We are pretending none of that happened. Everyone, welcome to Scarefest TV, the original broadcast date, September 1st, 2023. And tonight, tonight we have your council episode. We have your council episode where we sit here and we talk about all the crap that we're trying to get done in the last, it is September 1st, everybody, September 1st, as they say on Facebook, it is time, this, this is Halloween Eve. This is Halloween Eve. We're, we're already into the Halloween season. Despite it being like 90 degrees and all that stuff. So everybody, welcome to the show. Sorry about the little glitch there when uh, apparently something got turned off. But we're back at it now. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Adrian. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so September 1st is when we start playing our Rocky montage of putting all this <laughs> stuff together. I've I mean, got, we need got to film right that, above actually. the door. Right there. Oh, we're we're running up the steps of the center. We've up got up the wheelchair it. ramp. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Okay. Brandon, I hate to rip your nose in it. 107 film festival submissions, final count. 107. Got my nose in it. What the? What? We're behind the curve. We're not going to. I said earlier we were behind <laughs> the curve. And, and like, I have no doubt it, it was going to come through. I'm just letting you know. I think, but it like it, has, it, it, it has gone. I mean, and you, you continue to do an excellent job with it, better than you have no I fucking could. idea what I've done this year. <laughs> I know. He just knows. Here, you've no, done here, a good job. Let me, let me, <laughs> let, let me tell you from, a, from a managerial position. From a managerial position, when you don't hear complaints, that means somebody's doing good, and I've only heard good things. <laughs> so. That's what I base it off of. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, we uh, actually, I'm within what I tell you. Two movies have been completely yes, done. Yes. And they all came in in the last three days, incidentally. Um, so, yeah, I've got, but I've got two, three features left to watch. And I, yeah, I, and I just want to remind you that I, and I will confess to this right now. I, Wes, we both know this. I have monumentally messed up the film series every year, which is why I said, it's time to give it to somebody that's that's that can handle it. <laughs> like remember the year like when when we couldn't get anything to download? Oh yeah, no, I remember that. No, that that's oh, not yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. But I still have to at this point I still have to trust you to uh, to provide me something resembling a laptop. Better than the one I got, because I actually have been trying to watch them on my TV with my laptop. And it, it that's a disaster. Um and and uh um I've got well, I got to do it now. See, now the score starts. So, yeah, I don't know what I've gotten. I've gotten harsh on my judging. I just there are things that just irk me. And by the time you watch a hundred and five of these fuckers, they're just. If it happens, it's just. Oh my god, there is no way that movie's gonna. I'm not no. So, if I had to give the film festival entrance, or, or I shouldn't even say that. If I had to give. The independent film industry, any advice? Spend a little money on microphones. Spend a little money on microphones, and and you'll have a much better chance getting past me. But um, only anyway. God can judge me and West Forsyth. <laughs> but no, we've 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 got this year. We've got a really good bunch. Um, and we did. How can I explain it? I don't know that we got. The year that everybody was was took off for COVID, now that you could tell, they showed in their work. They put some 
they had extra time to work on it. Um, this year, my my initial reaction was, we we don't we originally we didn't have some of the real quality that I was looking for, but it it, it came through. We've got some really good ones in there. Um, the shorts, one of the shorts, I absolutely love. So there, I'm not gonna drop any spoilers, but it's like really really cool. And Anita watched a movie with me the other night, and she liked it. Hell yeah. And I'm not going to give any spoilers, but it starts within five, ten, within five minutes of the movie getting started, someone gets gutted. Heck yeah. I mean, gutted. Just gutted. So. Gut you like a fish. <laughs> That's what you all got to look forward to. We do, everyone, we do have some announcements tonight as far as we got a, a, a returning celeb. We've got, um, uh, a couple of ticketed items that were pushed. Actually, one ticketed item. One thing we're just um, um, giving away. So it's just all kinds of stuff going on. Brandon, compared to past years, do you feel like we're where we should be uh, five weeks away from the con? I mean, not five, oh uh, seven God. weeks. Seven, five seven weeks. weeks. <laughs> seven weeks. Seven weeks. Seven, I mean, considering like seven weeks in the past, like we were still scrambling to like do print orders and like I, I, I yeah I mean the last seven like yeah it's it's a blur like but this year we actually seem to be way ahead of where we're at usually um like I mean this year and last year are the only two years that I've I've not been like just absolutely beside myself in anxiety so <laughs> I, I take That's that as, as, as a good, as a good uh, move forward. It just seems like everything's just kind of, you know, we've always, we've always got stuff that we're going to have to work out at the last minute, like schedules and like, you know, panels and photo ops and all this stuff that like, you know, no matter, you can't do it earlier in the year. It has to be, you know, in this, mm -hmm. in this time period. And so, but everything just seems to be kind of going a little bit smoother and it gets a little bit smoother every year. And that's credit to you guys. Um, that is one thing, and I'll ask the fans this, because the people in this room, we don't know. We don't understand the psychology. Okay. We've got, we got our, our, uh, our schedule out on uh, um, uh, the seminars what? roughly the same time we always do. Yeah. Now we have, we're starting to have people ask, oh. and they don't even... Okay, I'm gonna call y'all you people out. You don't, you're not even nice about it. Where's the panel schedule? I was on the website and I couldn't find any panel schedule. Does any convention get their panel schedule out two months ahead of time? Is it just me being overly sensitive? No. Well, a lot of people though, like you know, when you take into consideration, we've we've got a lot of people that come to Scarefest now that you know haven't been to a lot of conventions or, or you know, haven't seen how... The I don't think those out. are the people asking that question, though. Because, okay... Yeah, I, think, I think it's a mix of both, though. I mean, you know, the thing you got to remember with, with the schedule and why people don't... Why people think... I mean, it, it's... People think that it should be posted, like, way early, but it's not that simple. Because not every celebrity arrives here on the same day. Not every celebrity departs on the same day. And we don't get that information until, I mean, we still haven't gotten it. And we won't get it until, you know, six, it'll, it'll start trickling in. And so once we start getting those travel arrangements, we know when everybody's going to show up, what day they have to leave, because, you know, even SAG on strike, you know, there's still work to be done and schedules to work around. And so we have to hone that once we get the travel and we see where the panels lie. We see who can do what day, what time, and that's what it all boils into. It's the same way with photo ops. Well said. Here, here. Yeah, so like, as far as it being like a concert and knowing like who's who's going to open and then like who's the next act and this they're going to go on this time and that time, it's not that prescribed, not in this world. So, okay, everybody, we're at the quarter uh, of the hour mark. I don't even know if we started on time or not. No, we're, we didn't. We didn't? No. Okay. Well, we're going to do our first commercial break right now regardless. 
because it's a nice, convenient time. Everybody, we'll be right back with more ScareFest TV. We're watching the chat room for your questions. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook, find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. Um, okay, uh, so what do we want to talk about? I, I, I blew my wad right there. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like you all did a lot of talking, but we didn't really say anything. That's what you do in the radio. Is that what we're doing here? That's what I do week after week. Awesome. Well, I have some stuff to talk about. Okay. So, um, a lot of the frequently asked questions stuff, we're going to talk about that. Also, I have a tentative date and time set for when we will be doing a public Zoom. The first one I'm going to do on a Wednesday, it's September 27th at 7 p.m. So, I will make a post about it. I'll let everybody know when the Zoom is going to be. And then I will post the Zoom link the day of. And then that way I don't have a ton of people just arbitrarily joining the Zoom room for the month leading up to it. But when we do that, we'll be able to go in depth a little bit more. We'll be able to do some screen sharing. A lot of the people that watch ScareFest TV every week, you all stay pretty up to date on everything. But I will really be pushing this out there for the new people that have never been to ScareFest or maybe never been to a, a horror convention. Because there's a lot of things that, um, you know, Brandon and Wes kind of touched on this a little bit. Some of us just know uh, there's a lot of stuff that comes very naturally to people that have been to shows before. But if you've never been to one of these events, even the most obvious things to us, they'll have questions about. So we want to make sure that we cover everything. But it's not stuff we want to talk about on Scarefest TV because most of you would be bored to tears because it's all things that you know. But we will be going over um, things like parking. We're going to talk a little bit about like just the layout of the show, how it works, what to expect. One thing I do want to let everybody know, uh, the hotels, like a lot of the hotels are really starting to get full. Even our offsite hotels are getting full. They have increased our fan block number at the Clarion four times now. I don't know how much longer we're going to keep getting grace on that. So if you haven't booked your room yet, got really great rates going on at the Clarion that involves the shuttle that we provide. And that's another thing we're getting questions about. The shuttle schedule won't be released until closer to the show, but it will run about every 30 minutes. That's what we're telling people. It may be a little faster than that, but 30 minutes is what we're aiming for on the shuttle schedule. Um, we have uh, gotten a lot of questions about tickets recently too. Some events are selling out, some are sold out, some of the tickets aren't available. Obviously, there's always people looking for, um, you know, VIP passes and stuff like that. So you all do really good about letting people know when they post their tickets for sale, they got to run that through us. Um, one thing that we are keeping a pretty close eye on, and Brandon maybe can expand on this a little bit. We did um, have a moment last year on Saturday where there were some concerns from the fire marshal about the, um, the capacity in the building. So when we listed our tickets for sale this year, we made sure Brandon made sure that the weekend passes and the Saturday passes said limited. Um, that isn't because we're doing less tickets. That is because there is a very good potential. Those will sell out. We are on track to sell out of weekend passes before the show. Um, Saturday passes are really getting up there. 
So that is something that we have to be conscientious of. And one of the steps that we took to prevent that from happening this year is we got a lot more space at the convention center on the second floor. So instead of having a lot of our events going on on the floor, we've spread that out a little bit more, putting, putting them downstairs and it gets us a huge amount of square footage that's available, which will make it to where we can have more people in the building. Um, and, you know, working like line control, routing lines a little bit differently. Uh, and we don't want to increase things to the point where you can't move, you can't have a good experience. All of these things we're really trying to keep in mind, you know, when saying how many of these tickets are we going to sell? How many of these are we going to sell? It was another reason we added the, the weekend plus passes this year. There was a high demand for those. Um, a not VIP tiered ticket, but something that would let people on the floor a little bit earlier. And that also kind of staggers things. So you're not seeing the general admission getting really impacted uh, by the lines as much um, as they would. So all of those things kind of go into our ticketing system and the amount of tickets that we sell and the way that we sell those. I see the chat is going nuts. So I'm going <laughs> to read a couple things. Um, well, we got one that's like, already scrolled. I mean, we, weekend passes are are, are going to be gone here, I, I would say, within another week, maybe, maybe two weeks tops. Um, so if you're wanting to do a weekend pass, you probably need to do it now. And I've usually – I've done pretty good about calling those. Mm -hmm. I usually call it within about a week or so based on trend. So if you want a weekend for this year, I would definitely go ahead and do it. And I'm not just saying that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's a fact. They're going to be gone very soon. Yeah, those those are like flying off the shelf. What were you saying, Wes, about one Some, that's already so, uh, Someone asked, oh, and I don't want to miss your question, um, they ask about exchanging their photo ops. As in, they, get a, they ordered a Friday photo op and maybe their schedule's changed. They're only going to come on Saturday. Or, okay. Or they... My answer would be that's pretty much between them and Celeb Photo Ops. I think they do yeah. do that, though. Right. Yes. Well, they can. And, and Celeb Photo Ops, so I just want to remind everybody. So if you buy a photo op, that doesn't automatically mean admission to the show, and that's the standard. You mm -hmm. have to buy entry to the show and a photo op. Photo ops are, re like, they're handled through our third party, Celeb Photo Ops. Because if you want it, if you had me taking pictures of you, you're going to be pissed off. Yeah. We've hired the best. They are the best of what they do. Um, as we adjust, like the photo ops, uh, we may add people, you know, things like that. If you decide you want to uh, exchange, you can exchange up and you can exchange at any time through their website on, on GrowTix. Um, now you can't, so you, you can adjust and, and they'll refund. If anybody cancels, they'll, they'll handle that. Uh, and they'll do that online. And once you, buy a photo op, you'll have a login for GrowTix that you can go in and, and make those requests. Yes. Now, on site, they will also have people working the table where you can go up, and those guys are super nice. You go up to them and tell them what you want to do, and they will bend over backwards to help you out. Um, you know, the, the, the photo op folks, the slip photo ops guys, like, I mean, they are hands down the best in the business, and this is an ever-changing kind of thing. And so they will adjust and, and refund yep. and, and, and move around however they need to do. And, and they'll also be doing a live. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. So, <laughs> so just like we'll be doing live, uh, Facebook lives and, and putting out that, uh, they will also, when we get about a week or two out, like their staff will be committed to asking, answering any questions you guys have. Yep. And that video will go out and, and yeah, it'll all be there. Yeah, yeah, they'll explain how it works, if you have any questions about anything. And also, you know, all of the information or most information that you could possibly want about photo ops is available on their website. Instead of going to our direct link, go to their main site and follow the link to our page. And they have a very extensive uh, frequently asked questions page on there. Another one I don't want to lose here is... Um, Someone asked if they buy their tickets online, do we have to wait in the line outside to get in for a bracelet for the convention? Yes. The first time that you come to the show, 
you will have to have your QR code scanned from your online purchase and they will put your bracelet on or give you your badge depending on the type of ticket that you bought. Once you have that though, if it's a weekend pass, you do not have to go back to the ticket office to get your next day pass. It will be good for the entire weekend, but you do have to come up to the ticket booth. Um, another thing that the ticket booth's really good about doing, Brandon and his team will actually go down through the line and scan people in and band them. So you don't have to wait to get up to the, the ticket counter. A lot of times they'll work backwards um, through the line and get people banded in, especially if we have any kind of photo ops that are earlier in the day, they'll go through the line and, and ask, you know, if people have those photo ops. When those schedules do come out, we need you all to be mindful. If you have an early photo op, you need to get to the show early and get as close to the front of the line as you can so that you can get banded and get in. We'll do our best to help you, but we also need help because if the line wraps around the convention center, it's harder for us to get back there to get people up to the front. So don't wait till the last minute and roll in because if you miss your photo op, they are not refundable. Uh, that is one thing they will stress. You have to make sure that you make the arrangements to get there for your scheduled time. So that, well, that was one. Yeah, and it, if this is your, like, whether you've been here before or whether it's your first time, there's a few things to keep in mind with that. So if you come in, the will be the ticket office will be open um, before the show Thursday and early Friday. Yep. And so if you come in Thursday and you get your weekend pass or your Saturday pass or your Friday pass or whatever, then when you show up at the show, you don't have to stand in the line. No. You can just walk right into re-entry and yep. not skip a beat. Well, there will be a line to go into the, the show before it opens, yeah. but you don't have to stand in the ticket line. And we're going to do better this year. Last year, there was a little bit of confusion and people that already had their credentials were standing in the line for the ticket booth that they didn't need to be in. There will be a line to go into the show and there will be a line for the ticket booth. And we'll do our best, even when that line is outside, to try to be directing people on you know which way you need to go. And again, when we do the Zooms, when we do the lives closer to the show, we will actually pull up on screen the floor plan. We'll pull up the Google Street View and we'll walk you all through where the lines are going to queue, where you need to go, how to get in, all of that. Um, we will try to cover as much of that. Any questions that you all can come up with, like we'll have everything worked out um, to very specific detail by then. Right now, there's still some things moving around. There's some, you know, stuff that could change. So we don't want to put that information out now. And then you think, okay, I'm good to go. And then something changes and we have to communicate that change. So we just wait until the absolute last minute when we're sure everything is set in stone to get that information out to you guys. Yeah. And, um, so we, and we've gone out and like, like Adrian said, like we've scanned back far, but if you're running late and you have a photo op, Find someone that has a staff shirt on. That that they'll they'll be posted outside the main entry. They'll be posted at the end of the line. You have a photo op, and you see a mile like a line going in there, and it's in 20 minutes. Go to a staff person, tell them you have a photo op, pull up your ticket, and then we will make sure you get to your photo op. <clears throat> but don't don't you know, press the luck on that because everybody knows if you buy a photo op and it's a time, like there's a lot of people that attend the show, there's a line to get in, you need to get there early and get in as quick as you can. Uh, some of the questions from the chat. If you have a Saturday ticket, yes, you can pick it up on Friday. Um, yeah. And we, you can also pick it up on Thursday, which leads into the next question. The box office hours for Thursday. I believe those hours for Thursday, we were gonna do 12 to five, roughly. We will post those with more specificity, a little bit closer, but um, I think right now it's gonna be 12 to five. It may be one to six, somewhere in there, but we do have vendor setup going on that day. Um, and the ticket office is located in the pre-function, but there are booths in there. So if you all um, you know, come in on Thursday and we'll post this too, you know, you just need to be aware of your surroundings, if there's people moving totes in or trolleys, things like that, just, you know, keep an eye out for that. But we should have a pretty 
pretty good setup area for you to pick up on Thursday. Um, and I think actually that answered both of those. So yeah, ticket office hours for Thursday. Um, we'll also have like VIP check-in will be open during that time. So our golden tickets, our platinum tickets, you all, if you're coming in early, coming in on Thursday, go ahead and come up, get your stuff. And then you don't have to worry about the line on Friday. If you want to come over and enjoy the, uh, the black carpet, obviously, you know, and get your early entry, do that. Um, let's see. Does anyone know if the Vine Street doors will be opened? Yes. Uh, there's three entrances to the convention center, which we will go over in more detail. But the main entrance is the high street entrance. That's the one that we used last year. That is the furthest away from the escalators. If you go down the escalators all the way, that's the main street entrance. If you go down the escalators to the second level, there's a long hallway that spans the whole building, wraps all the way around Rupp Arena. And there's an entrance there between Rupp Arena and the Hyatt. It's also the way that if you were leaving the Hyatt building, coming into Rupp Arena and the convention center, you would come that way. So there are three entrances. All of them will be open. And we are looking at adding a um, check-in, a ticket kiosk on the second level so that the line that went down the escalator last year um, doesn't happen. That will, there will be a line form down there, but it won't be on the stairs or the escalator. It will be going down the Vine Street hallway. Um, the thing you info. Let, uh, I'm gonna go, let's go ahead and uh, stay on time here. We're going to do our announcements. We're going to get that out of the way. Everybody said, hold your questions. We don't want them to scroll off the screen. I'm trying to write them down, but we don't want to lose them. Okay. Um, JP's Horror Collection. We want to give them a shout out. They're a sponsoring Scarefest vendor. They've been coming for years. Welcome to JP's Horror Collection on jpshorror.com. jpshorror.com. You'll find great prices, fast shipping, excellent customer service. Check out their collectibles at home decor. And don't forget to shop their sales section where you can get great discounts. For our celebrity announcement of the evening, Patty Starr is coming back. Patty Starr, the woman that started the Scarefest, the woman behind the whole damn thing. Uh, Patty Starr, um, author, been on TV several times. Patty Starr. The original Ghost Hunter is coming to Scarefest. I'm going to let Brandon tell about this one. We have sledgehammers. Brett Wagner's got sledgehammers. Oh, yeah, I've got the... Well, you, I don't know if you can see me or not, but I've got the mock-up sitting right here in my lap. So, we are doing... So, Brett, I, friends, uh, these bloody sledgehammers from the Kemper Kill from 2003 Texas Chainsaw. And they are pretty bad A. And I picked one up from him, and we came up with the idea of doing a limited edition, only 50 of them, uh, that we're going to sell. Kind of like we did the uh, the mops with Mark Torgel back in the Toxic Avenger year of 19, or 20, no, it was 21, sorry. Yep. And so the guys at Lextro have made us some awesome plaques. You get a badass sledgehammer a fully color plaque that he will sign and you can get J JSA to authenticate it on site. And there's only going to be 50 of these bad boys and, and I'm number one and they're numbered. So like each plaque is going to be numbered. Um, and it's the 20th anniversary of that. Uh, Brett Wagner, obviously the lost leather face who did the infamous first kill uh, in the 2003 and one hell of a guy. Uh, yes. Yeah, you, you're definitely not going to want to miss out on, on this one because, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. And I mocked up this one uh, myself the other night, so it looks pretty awesome. And I'm... I'm and I'm, also, it it is a prop. So someone asked or said it would be heavy to pack around. They're props. Um, they're not metal sledgehammers. So uh, they're, they're not heavy. Uh, at all, if you have like a backpack or something, you could probably just slip it down in your shoulder strap and pack it around with you uh, pretty easily. So don't fret about that. Uh, you can pick these up yeah. at the ticket office and then take them to Brett's table. Meet Brett. He'll sign it for you. Um, and it's awesome. These will sell out before the show. There are only 49 available. I assume to yeah, be going yeah, sale. Sorry, you got me to blame for that one. But like, 
I mean, it's an actual wood handle. When we come back to screen, oh, Brandon, because I don't think they can see you. I'll just hold it here in my hand. Yes. <laughs> no, that's right. I'm watching him. He's waving the thing around. I know. Oh, what? 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 Okay, but I, before we get leave though uh, on that, what? Uh, when? How soon are they going on sale? I'll put them on sale right now. There you go. There's your answer in the chat room. Next up, now this one has special meaning to my heart. Because, Adrian, what is your yeah. opinion about Greg Nicotero canceling because they're filming again on The Walking Dead? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, since they made that announcement, we have been in contact with them planning this event. And um, he absolutely is still scheduled to come to Scarefest. And even if they were filming, uh, you're only like an hour plane ride away from where they film. So he could, you know in theory, be down there Friday morning and be back Monday afternoon. So no worries there. Right. But now, okay. Now that being said, tell them what we're putting on sale. So this actually is probably one of the coolest celebrity experiences that I think that, you know, we will have in general, Greg Nicotero owns Nick and Norman's restaurant in downtown Lexington, which a lot of you all know. Um, we've had dinner there several times. The food is great. And since Greg's going to be in town, we have decided to shut down the restaurant and he's going to be hosting a private dinner. It is a ticketed event. The details for that are, it will be on sale for $125. That's per person. It includes appetizers, dinner there will be a cash bar for drinks it comes with an exclusive 8 by 10 signed photo that you can't get at the show it will only be at the private dinner he will do a selfie with everyone um, and he will be doing a Q&A the dinner is scheduled you can check in at about 8 30 get in get your seat and the dinner will go from 9 p.m to 11 p.m so it is a two-hour dinner event with Greg, you get all of this awesome swag. It really is just a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to get some one on one time with this legendary man. So, really, really stoked about this one. All right. Uh, we do want to do a push for celebrity illusionist Reed Masterson. His, okay, I'll just be blunt with you. His tickets haven't been selling it like we thought they would. And we looked on the website, and the basically the way we had them listed, that you, it was very easy to overlook them. Reed Masterson's Magic Show. He's doing one a day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those are on sale on the ticket site. Go to add-ons. I just want to give him a plug. But he's, uh, it's, he's, he's, he's a big deal, everybody. He's a big deal. And Adrian will also be telling you about this. I will just tell you it's Goblin performing the live score to a screening of Dario Argento's Demons. Yes, yeah, so we just got some communication from the convention center. They also manage the Lexington Opera House, and they were bringing this show. It's September 27th, so this is really more for our local folks. Um, they have given us some tickets to give away, and we will be making a post on the fans group and let you all know how you can win these tickets. It's going to be really cool. So uh, I will give you some more information about that as soon as I have that. And again, I'm going to post it on the page. So if you're interested in this, be on the lookout for that post um, because it is, uh, it's coming up. It's at the end of this month and it should be a, a really good time. Okay, the Central Kentucky Mystical Market coming up in uh, September 30th and October 1st. End of the month into October. Last one before Scarefest at the Newtown Pike um, uh, Clarion Hotel. So uh, check that out on Facebook or go to their website. My Patreon is still plugging along. I'm up to 28 members now, 28 members. And there is a free membership level that counts towards me doing the cosplay from Sleepaway Camp, just so you know. But it is basically now, I'm in the, I'm in a month now. I am going in one month from now, I'm going to be doing my first ever 
5K after having a heart attack. So it's kind of a big deal. But if you'd like to support me, uh, we're doing it. Um, and if I get enough supporters, I'm going to do a that cosplay with a tramp stamp. But the important thing is to Patreon. Dot com slash Scarefest Radio. Seriously, this is just my little thing that I'm doing. I uh, got memberships down to a dollar. Got a free membership level that you uh, get notified when there's post on there. So I just wanted to uh, uh, give a, myself a plug for that. And special thanks to my friend Gloria Frakes. She is sponsoring my first ever in my entire life, including when I was young and healthy, my first ever 5K. Uh, it's the Run Baby Run. It's... um. Um, benefiting the the neonatal ICU babies. So there, how's that for me being a worthy person? You're very altruistic. Um, um okay, let's see here. Uh, while we were out, okay, let's... now he is showing the. Uh, yeah, he's showing the hammer now. Yeah. Now you can see the hammer, everybody. Oh, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, no, I'm just gonna hang on to it the entire time. Okay. <laughs> so, oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, this thing's actual wood handle stock. The uh, the end up here is, is prop foam, so you can't really like murder anybody with it, but you can cause some damage, I guess, with the wood handle. And then we've gotten plaques made up where he'll sign here, and I'll put a. You can, not, you're not gonna be able to see it if I show you, but like on the on the webcam, but the uh, graphic we post tonight will show it all. I mean, this thing's pretty awesome. Bad like Scarlett hit me in the kneecap with it the other day, and like <laughs> while it didn't like completely put me down, I she was have... practicing misery because Katie is her idol. Oh, oh, that's very true. Yeah. Uh, some of the questions that I caught: um, the rear entrance will not be open to the public. Jake asked that. When will the vendor information go out? I think she normally sends that out about a month before the show, three weeks to four weeks. We still have to get some details finalized from the convention center. Their staff have to be on site to supervise the loading and unloading to make sure no one puts an eye out. Um, the early, someone asked if the people who purchased early entry tickets have to wait in line. Um, yes, you have to get your tickets redeemed when you get there and then You'll get in line if you have early entry. You get to go in at three on Friday. If you have general admission, you ha you get to go in at four. Um, the early entry is at three p.m. on Friday. That also goes in with the black carpet, which we can let Wes talk about that process in just a second. And the sledgehammer cost is one hundred thirty dollars. So that includes the autograph, the piece, and it is again exclusive and numbered we won't be reproducing these. So once they're gone, they're gone. Um, Wes, do you want to explain, like, why does the black carpet start at the same time as VIP and early entry into the con? Why, why do those two things happen? Something I would happen? explain that, but I have no goddamn idea. Well, I'll um. explain it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have the celebrities that come down. A lot of them will set up their tables and everything, and then they come out to the front of the show. We have a large media presence there, the local news, things like that. And we let the attendees go ahead. You can hang out and watch and then go in if you wanna see like your favorite person, maybe step up and introduce them. Wes introduces them, maybe they answer a question. Um, but then everybody gets to go in, you get to get in line, uh, the celebrities get introduced and then they filter in and start signing autographs. And normally, you know, it. The whole process takes 30 minutes-ish, um, sometimes a little bit more, depending on how many of them want to uh, to do the black carpet introduction. But you can go ahead and go in and get in that line, and then they'll start signing as soon as they get in there. But that that gives them uh, gives you a chance to go inside and get in line, and it gives them a chance to get you know a queue built up so when they come in, they can just jump right into working. Okay, um... This is actually something we talked about today, so we're going to, uh, and it's come up, quiet room. So I want to ask if we're going to have a quiet room. Explain okay. what we're doing for a quiet room. So one of the things that we talked to the convention center about, because any square inch of the convention center that we use, in some way, we are paying for it. 
um, so to get an actual room that's just a, a quiet room um, will detract from other things that we're able to do at the show. Like maybe the cost of that room would stop us from bringing in a couple of celebrities or stop us from doing some of these events. There's a lot of, you know, things that go into that consideration. But one of the things that we did talk about, so there's two things I'm going to mention here. One of them that we haven't really released, we've kind of hinted at it a little bit. Uh, we are going to have a VIP lounge this year. It's nothing super fancy, but to the folks that are going to be there all weekend long and you got the VIP tickets and you've been to the show before, maybe you haven't been to the show before, there is a woeful lack of seating available <laughs> because every square inch we have to pay for so we don't take up a lot of space with chairs. Um, and if we do provide chairs, they disappear. I don't know where the chairs go, um, but every year they just vanish. So. The VIP lounge will be a place for any level VIP hold, ticket holder, whether that's golden or platinum, you will have your own place. It will be downstairs on the second level in the meeting room six, seven, and eight, where we will be holding the drag show Friday night, the VIP party Saturday night. That room is going to be open all day Friday and all day Saturday. It's right across from the food court. So if you're VIP and you want to kind of get away from the hustle and bustle, you can go down, grab a drink. There will be a bar set up right outside the room. Um, you can grab some food and go into the VIP lounge and chill out. If you are a regular ticket holder, there is a long hallway that I mentioned on the second floor that goes from the second floor of the convention center all the way around Rupp Arena to the Hyatt. And that hallway has a ton of outlets. Uh, there's a lot of space. It's like a 25, 30 foot wide hallway that runs the entire length of the arena. Um, so it's not, again, not glamorous, but we are going to talk to the convention center about posting signs in that hallway um, to, you know, keep the noise level down, that that is marked as a quiet area. So there won't be music playing over the intercom down there. Uh, it should be a place where you can go, sit down, find an outlet, charge your phone, take a break. Again, the food court is right at the entrance of that hallway. So if you want to, you know, grab some food, you, you can sit in the food court and eat, or you can bring that out into the, the big open hallway and have your food there. So as far as an enclosed quiet room, no, but we are going to try to have some quiet space, but it is public space. So we can't really tell people, you know, they have to be quiet, but it will be a courtesy thing. Just try to kind of keep the noise level down when you're in that area. Okay, someone in the chat room, Jake Oddball, asked this twice, so you must feel strongly about it. Brandon, are you worried that the convention is getting too big? I think that there's a, there's a level that I'm comfortable with, and I, I'm not going to go past that. And last year was the level I was pretty well comfortable with. I mean, I don't imagine it getting much bigger, but I mean, we're, we're still, I mean, already, I mean, going into it, I mean, we were already one of the larger ones, just not publicized. <laughs> well, it's because uh, we're not crammed into a hotel the size yeah. of, the, of, of the Red Roof Inn. But, and that yeah, and that's the other thing we've got to consider too is that you know a lot of a lot of horror conventions are hotel shows, and I love hotel shows like they they are awesome. But you, you know, twenty thousand in a hotel show is not the same thing as as twenty thousand in a convention show. And so I think we've got plenty of room for people to come in without it losing like its personality. Yeah, so and. Sense. To add on to that, you know, several of the, the things that we've talked about, we've looked at, we added the second floor meeting space so that we could host our panels again, so that we could have our speakers be in a room with good acoustics, um, you know, that they're not getting talked over or music played over them. Um, we're having the film festival back on site so that you don't have to cross the road and leave the building. That space offers, you know, we can have the classroom set up. But what we didn't do is we didn't get that space to put celebrities and vendors down there. Um, the hallway 
in front of the meeting rooms is huge. So there may be some tables set up down there. Um, but we aren't looking to move out of the convention hall with the like I guess the content the vendors the celebrities we want to keep those pretty centralized so as far as like going outside of that and getting bigger we don't have any plans to do that if you mean getting bigger named celebrities um, you know things like that we do intend to you know try to bring people that we haven't had before and and give people the opportunity to meet folks that you know, maybe they don't do cons very often for whatever reason. We do want to grow in, in that aspect, but we want to keep it to where there's enough going on that I've been accused several times this week of, you know, being in bed with the mortgage companies, people having to take out second and third mortgages on their homes. I get it. But uh, the answer that I gave on that today was we want enough of a variety that people you know everybody can find something that they really enjoy and but also to you know keep it keep it to where there's not so much going on that everything is totally overwhelmed and that's why we really take a lot of care when we're planning these things out and make sure that you know we try to have stuff going on everywhere but not um too overlapping or um you know things like that so just to kind of expand on that a little bit. And I, I hope that answers it. Well, and, and just to build on that, like I think a show, a show can grow. I mean, you know, a show at the end of the day is still a business. It has to grow and it has to be able to, like we have to sustain it over time and we have to have something that people will continue to be able to, to enjoy. That being said, I think a show can get bigger. The problem that you have to focus on is not changing the culture of the show. Yes. And, and what I mean by that is the heart and, and soul that goes into it and the way that you treat like the people that are coming in, you know, you can get too big or you can grow a show and it lose its culture. It loses yes. its dynamic. What makes it, you know, what was fun to begin with. But I think as long as you stay true to your roots and, and what you're doing, I think the show can get bigger and open it up to more folks and it not hurt or it the not make it, of it. It doesn't dilute it. Right. Right. Um, I do want to, okay. Adrian, as uh, uh, this gentleman asked, he just snagged his Nicotero ticket, but do you yeah, know I, if he, he will sign one, an item in lieu of the eight by 10 photo? So that was an oversight on me. I meant to add that in the item description. No. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. Um, the reason that we decided to go with an exclusive eight by 10 that won't be available is one, because it's an exclusive and it's all, that's awesome. But um, two, one of the things that we really want to avoid is people, we didn't want to have to get into the weeds on what was okay to sign, what wasn't. We are doing no outside items autographed at all. Um, he will sign the 8x10 that's provided by him at the event. But one of the examples that was given to me was, you know, if someone has a really cool poster that has a lot of cast signatures on it and they bring it into the restaurant and a drink gets spilled on it or something. It's it's not a controlled environment as like the con is. And the con, you've got your table. He can do the autograph, move it off to the side, let it dry. The restaurant atmosphere isn't conducive to that. If you set a drink down and there's a ring on the table, you know, and he's not going to be set up at a table at this event. It's it's a dinner. He's going to be there. He's going to be socializing and eating and stuff like that too. And to kind of give that more of a relaxed atmosphere, you know, we didn't want him like sitting down and having people hand him stuff to sign. So this way, you know, it, it can really be more of a social function than a work function for him. The uh, the dinner is on Thursday. Yes. Does, now, does the ticket say that? Make sure the ticket says that. You said you launched it. And obviously, okay. someone's already bought it. But somebody said the website doesn't say, but that may mean the website, not the ticket site. But it is Thursday. Now, somebody else asked, what will that conflict with? Trivia. There's only so many hours in the day. We've got it scheduled where it will not conflict with the um, um, 
bourbon tasting, but it will conflict with our launch party trivia. So just want to be very clear on that. Um, there was another one here. Uh, date. I added the date to the um to the name of the item. Also. Okay, there you go. Oh, um, okay. This is something we're still working on. Somebody says, said that they saw that the Saturday party will ha- will there be tickets sold at the door. That is still up in the air because we do not know how much space we will have. I think that's the easiest way to put it right now, right? Yeah, we are anticipating well, being able to, but it, it comes down to capacity. But yes, we are anticipating that we'll be able to open up ticket sales for that at the door and maybe pre-sale, but we won't know until closer to the show and we get confirmation from the convention center. Yeah, you got to keep in mind that like, so the convention center couples with Rupp Arena and that yeah. means K basketball and whether you're from Tennessee or Georgia, I'm sure you can understand that um, sometimes like they still have events that are being scheduled out there. And so if what we want to have happen happens, it's going to be badass on the second floor, but we don't have a way of knowing right now exactly how much space that we've got. Yeah. Uh, we know the minimum, but we don't know the maximum. Yes, exactly. That's a really good way to put it. We know that for what we want to do uh, right now, that party is going to be for staff, for VIPs, and for the celebrities. And we know we've got plenty enough room to have those people in that area comfortably um and you know it's just going to come down to a couple of other factors once we know because we don't want to oversell it um because right now it's included in the vip ticket and that is you know (laughs) that's what we're doing for them if we do open up the sales it will be for a limited number of people because again it comes down to we don't want to really dilute the experience and if you've been coming to scarefest for a while you know Uh, The VIP party changes um, sometimes quite drastically from year to year. Uh, We've never really figured out exactly what we can do that really, you can't make everybody happy, but we do kind of go back and forth on having a bigger event, smaller event. Um, So that's kind of, that's where we're at right now. Okay. I need to get, I mean, once we, we're, we're still growing into the convention center because it's only been built. Like this is, this is only our third year in there. Yeah, I mean, it's been changing, um, you know, there for a while. I mean, quite a bit. So eventually we'll we'll run into a, a thing, I think, after this year that we're pretty steady on, on how it's going to look. But, yeah, this year there's still a lot of fluctuation. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my last commercial break. When we come back, we're going to finish up with the questions we see in the chat room. This is a quick one, except for we got Joe coming up with his movie review. Anyway, um, Spirit Mechanics, spiritmechanics.com, longtime supporter of Scarefest TV, longtime supporter of me. I love these guys. They now have a brick and mortar shop at 1018 East New Circle Road, 1018 East New Circle Road in Lexington. They call it the Missing Elements Shop, the Missing Elements. It's a one stop shop for Spirit Mechanics, Stevens Healing Vibrations, offering books, divination, altar supplies, tarot, and oracle decks handmade glassware and spirit boards and coming very very soon the west forsyth meditation candle um steven's healing vibrations incidentally that's vibrational sound healing and people i'm telling you don't scoff at it give it a shot it is nifty as heck and i believe it works missing element shop 1018 eastern new circle road visit them at spiritmechanics.com Now for our movie review. Hey there, Scarefest. This is Joe Lewis, Bonehead Weekly. And this movie is a little controversial in the fact that a lot of people I see on my social media liked it, and a lot of you didn't like it at all. So there's not a lot of in-between on this one, and I finally got to see it and wanted to see it a few weeks ago. By the time this probably comes out, I don't even know if it'll be shown in theaters. Hopefully it'll be on streaming pretty soon. We're going to talk about The Last Voyage of the Demeter. A little history about this. This movie's been in development hell for years. I mean, there's been so many different directors attached to this thing throughout time. There's finally two screenwriters uh, giving credit for it. Both of them have written other horror films. 
but it's directed by Andre Overdahl. And he did the scary stories to tell in the dark, which I kind of liked in a movie I love called The Autopsy of Jane Doe. And another movie I love called Troll Hunter. Everything I've seen of him, I've liked. And this is by no, this is no exception. Basically, what happens is, is they made a movie out of one chapter in Dracula. And it's the captain's log describing the Demeter and getting there and what all happened. By the time everybody shows up, they're all dead and gone. So you're finding a couple of things with that. So if you know how Dracula pans out, you know the story of Dracula, you know most of the people on the ship, if all of the people on the ship aren't making it out alive. And if they do, well, they're just, it's Dracula still wins because we know Dracula still has to happen. So how do you make a movie suspenseful? Well, I wouldn't say this movie's overly suspenseful. I think some people have given it too much credit. I, on the other hand, still loved it and still really enjoyed it. But I see why people got upset about it because it has a lot of, how I should say, influences from other movies that I love. That's the reason. So Dracula's look is based on Count Orlock from Nosferatu. Some of the scenes in it are straight out of Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot, the way they're shot. And I don't blame him. But a lot of people have been saying that this movie is heavily influenced by Hammer. Now, when you talk about Hammer films, these are the Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee films, influenced to me the pacing of this movie. But actually, the movie I think that it steals a lot from, uh, just design-wise and whatnot, was a 1978-79 version of Dracula directed by John Badham. That, it starred in Frank Langella, starring Frank Langella as, as Dracula. That movie actually, I think, influences more. I'd love to interview the director about this and see if I'm right. He basically says in, in his interview that the movie's alien on a ship, and I can't argue with that. But it has a lot of throwbacks. It's very bloody. Bad things happen to people that wouldn't normally happen in mainstream films. I love the way Dracula looks. I love the atmosphere of it. It has some fantastic performances across the board. It's actually not poorly written, only a couple of groaners. Liam Cunningham is a fantastic character actor. He was in Game of Thrones. He plays the Onion Knight. He's in this as well. He plays the captain. So there's very little for me to actually throw rocks about, throw stones. I really enjoyed the movie. I think you should check it out as well. But I understand that most of you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about, about the Frank Langella 79 John Badham version of Dracula. Because I think this movie, this filmmakers have seen that a couple of times and they took a lot away from it. I think they did. I think they saw that in, in Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot, the TV version from the late 70s. But that's just my opinion, okay? That's just my opinion. So should you see the, the Last Voyage of the Demeter? Yes. Should it have been probably been called Dracula and the Last Voyage of the Demeter like it is in Europe and other places? Probably done a little bit better. I don't think a lot of people, in fact, when the guy took my ticket, he goes, uh, Demeter, Demeter, right down there, dude, right down there. They don't read books. So this has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly telling you, go out and watch The Last Voyage of the Demeter or catch it on streaming if you miss it. I'm blurry. Oh, well. You are. There we go. Oh, there go. <laughs> anyway. More Dr one. Drunk again. Okay. No. Okay. I'm going to actually add part uh, of this. Okay. There is no shuttle on Thursday. Thursday oh. is not a convention day. There is no hotel shuttle. There's no event shuttle. But um, we're, everything's in a kind of a, a, a local area there. Now. What time, Adrian, will the sh hotel shuttle start on Friday? We don't know yet. We don't know um, yet. I, yeah, I would say that we will um, look at starting that hotel shuttle around the time that Will Call opens each day. Uh, Friday may be a little bit different because we're opening Will Call pretty early. We're opening at noon. So I would say that, well, the other thing to remember is that um, – a lot of people won't be checking in until Friday and hotel check-ins are typically three and 4 PM. So a lot of you all that um, like you can request an early check-in from the hotel. That doesn't mean you're going to get it, but a lot of people won't be able to check into their rooms until Friday night anyway. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. You know, if you're traveling in, you, you may not be able to utilize the, the shuttle um, early in the day, but just, you know, plan that out. The so also has an Uber line. Yes. And Lexington Ubers, and, and it's just something to you know supplement. But uh, Lexington Ubers are actually quite reasonable, 
And if you're staying at one of the host hotels, you're probably looking at maybe uh, eight to nine dollars a trip back and forth, which is going to be exponentially less than the parking cost probably. Uh, and there's a whole dedicated lane off of Vine Street for that. I think my chat froze. Okay, um, well, we're, we're, all, we're actually getting caught up pretty good here. Okay, to answer, yes, there will be a full bar at the VIP party. Otherwise, I'm not going. <laughs> so. There will be there will be more than one bar at the yeah. VIP party. There that, will be two. That's that's the important takeaway uh, from that question. Yes, there will be multiple. The, there'll be three if you count the bourbon bottles in the show office. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Harlan made a comment about if we run out of room at the VIP party, we'll move to Brandon's room. And just so everyone understands the pecking order around here, Brandon doesn't get a hotel room. Sorry. So you'll be partying in a tent out on, uh, you know, Merino or something. Yeah, contrary to popular belief, Brandon uh, takes care of himself last when it comes to accommodations. And so I've slept on a couch, slept in an RV. You don't sleep. Came back to my house and slept one night. Like it just depends. I know he knocked on my door at four a.m. two years ago. So, um, anyway, and I need to sleep. So yeah. anyway, um, that everybody, I, that's all. If you, I, I'll give you another minute here. If we missed your question, but right now that's everything uh, that I've got, and. And and that's tonight's show. Now one, one more big meeting. Yes. Council. Now I, I do want to give everybody a heads up. In October, you can damn near count on we will do. We will have our council episode, and then the way the month falls, I'll probably make Adrian come on here the week after that, just to do more Q and A. The way the month falls this year, it's short. Yeah. So, uh, we because we want that's one thing we pride ourselves in. Is audience participation. That's not the um, We've already, uh, just so everybody knows, we have already sold several tickets to the dinner event and we have already sold several of the sledgehammers. So uh, make sure to put that on your calendar. If you uh, are interested in either one of those, both of these things will sell out before the convention. You won't be able to, well, obviously the Nicotero dinner will happen before Scarefest the day before, but um, mm -hmm. they will sell out. So grab those if you want them, because uh, they'll go pretty quickly. Yeah, the, the Nicotero dinner, I get a tray table and the bathroom stall. I'll see what and I can so do. You'll see me in there. Now, the men's room. Uh, <laughs> I, I think most of our regulars that are uh, come on and watch Scarefest TV are aware that we actually do have a website, scarefestweekend.com, scarefestweekend.com. But there's a lot of information there. We have our FAQ. That's pretty much the stuff that never changes. Schedules are starting to go up. Now, that does not mean they're completed. The seminar schedule is uh, is completed, but we did start posting the individual room schedules, and then Brandon is working on a master schedule that will tell you if you just want to run from like every five minutes going from one spot to another, you can, you can follow his schedule. Yep. That's true. Yeah, I mean, schedules will be posted up there, but like, I'm gonna tell you one thing: your best, the best thing, if you're a weekend pass holder, VIP, etc., uh, on your lanyards and then around the show, you'll see QR codes to scan, and that's gonna take you directly to the schedule online. Yes. And that's gonna be your best bet because things that are adjusted last minute, you know, this this. This thing is ever changing due to schedules, especially if you've got seventy plus celebs. Trust me, it's going to move around quite a bit. It's fluid. It's fluid, it's as we like to fluid say. Fluid is the word of the, yes. of the year. Fluid. It's moist. So everybody, that is Scarefest TV. I believe Terrence Muncy's coming on with me next week, just so you know. And so to answer somebody else's question, he will be on next week to tell you all about his cards. Uh, that awesome. The trading cards. That's another thing. Yeah, we got so much stuff to talk about because Scarefest trading cards, Scarefest Series 2 trading cards will be available this year. And a lot of people didn't know about them last year. 
and we're not going to tell you where they're going to be, but they're going to be all over the show. So we want to keep an eye out for those. So everybody, this has been Scarefest TV. See you next week.